What if our income increases or decreases? Would our utility maximization mix stay the same? The answer depends on what type of products we are choosing between. Normal goods or inferior goods? Here is an example. The utility maximizing choice on the original budget constraint is M. The dashed horizontal and vertical lines extending through M allow you to see at a glance whether the quantity consumed of goods on the new budget constraint is higher or lower than on the original budget constraint. On the new budget constraint, a choice like N would be made if both goods are normal goods. If overnight stays, in this case, is an inferior good, a choice like P will be made. If concert tickets are an inferior good, a choice like Q will be made. What if the price of one or both products change? How does that change our utility maximization mix? The original utility maximizing choice is M in this graph. When the price rises, the budget constraint shifts to the left. The dashed lines make it possible to see at a glance whether the new consumption choice involves less of both goods or less of one good or more of the other. The new possible choices would be fewer baseball bats and more cameras, like point H, or less of both goods, as at point J. Choice K would mean that the higher price of bats led to exactly the same quantity of bats being consumed but fewer cameras. Choices like L are ruled out as theoretically possible, but highly unlikely in the real world because they would mean that a higher price for baseball bats means a greater quantity consumed of baseball bats. Consumers demand what gives them the most utility for the price. This is basically what utility maximization is. We see on these graphs that we can extend the utility maximization exercise into the realm of demand curves. In the upper graph, we see that S is the price for housing increases from PO to P1 to P2 to P3. The budget constraint on the upper part of the diagram shows shifts to the left. The utility maximizing choice changes from MO to M1 to M2 to M3. As a result, the quantity demanded for housing shifts from QO to Q1 to Q2 to Q3, caterus paribus. The demand curve graphs each combination of the price of housing and the quantity of housing demanded, caterus paribus. Indeed, the quantities of housing are the same at the points on both upper and lower graphs. Thus, the original price of housing, PO, and the original quantity of housing, QO, appear on the demand curve as point EO. The higher price for housing, P1, and the corresponding lower quantity demanded for housing, Q1, appear on the demand curve as point E.